So hello um, everyone and welcome to today's webinar on the latest release of the Geodata Investigator version 1.1, a cross-domain data analysis plugin for Patrol. My name is Mark O'Brien from Blueback, I'll be your host today. Thank you all for your um, participation. So just a quick note uh, on today's session, we're going to be using a GoToMeeting hosted presentation. You should see a panel like this. You can minim minimize the panel by clicking on this arrow, um, click again to uh, bring the panel back. You can display the go-to meeting session as a full screen or window via the view menu. By default, everyone is muted, so please submit any questions you have into the text dialog, and we'll do our best to answer you as we go along. And um, this webinar is being recorded, so you will be provided a link within 24 hours. Please feel free to distribute as you require. And finally, the recording will also be posted on our website. So moving on to the agenda. Um, so we'll begin with a few slides in PowerPoint, as usual, by way of introduction to the Geodata Investigator which I will refer to more often than not as GDI, so Geodata Investigator. I'll talk through the GDI custom domain object, the data types currently supported, the new plot windows and all the enhancements that have gone into this current release. I will then spend most of the scheduled time in the live demo, covering both an introduction to the tools, windows and enhancements in version 1.1. I'll then share some of the Q&A that have come in. Um, so moving on to the initial introduction. Detailed data analysis is required at all stages of the patrol workflow, and the Blueback Geodata Investigator provides new functionality to satisfy the requirements of geomodelers, geologists, and geophysicists. Understanding your data distribution and trends prior to building your reservoir models can be crucial when making decisions. The Blueback Geodata Investigator, or GDI, brings powerful new cross-domain data analysis to patrol. The plugin introduces a new concept for data analysis by separating out and um, data selection from data visualization. Um, the new custom histogram, scatterplot, and crossplot windows include a series of tools for analysis of well, seismic, 3D model, surface, or ASCII table data loaded to the tool. Data analysis is always, um, data, sorry, data for analysis is pre-processed, stored, and managed through the new custom GDI investigation domain object. The user adds in a new Blueback GDI investigation object to the input tree, and then selects the data they wish to investigate. This is processed and stored against the new domain object. The GDI investigation can then be used to provide the source data for a variety of plots. It also asks, acts as a central repository for any restrictions, equations, and annotations created in any plot based on that investigation. This allows these objects to be shared between plots and data selection needs only happen once. Um, current uh, supported data types for this release uh, include R, so well folders, individual wells, 3D seismic, 2D seismic, 2D seismic by vintage, surface data, model data, and user-defined table data. So bringing in um, columns from Excel or Patrol spreadsheets or indeed any other table source. GDI introduces three new custom plot windows, the blueback histogram, which allows for 1D analysis of data. Data can be displayed as either counts or percentages, and the histogram can be displayed as bar, stacked bars, or lines. Blueback scatterplot allows the user to make a 2D analysis. The plot can display any of the defined input data templates in that investigation object against each other. So template X against template Y, template Y against template Z, etc. Uh, Blueback crossplot is a new multiple viewport window which combines a scatterplot with horizontal and vertical histograms representing the distributions horizontally and vertically. vertically. <coughs> So moving on to version 1.1 updates, um, several performance enhancements have been made for GDI 1.1. Rendering speed has been improved within plot windows. 2D data is now auto decimated and several bug fixes have been implemented. Feature enhancements include data, uh, data point counts have been reorganized. Well picks and depths are available to filter well data by. You can now export a data selection from a plot window to a spreadsheet, a point set with attribute or dynamic point set, which we'll cover in the demo. You can create indicator well logs based on um, well data selected in the plot window. There is an enhancement to the point density to reflect data visibility. You can now quickly convert from auto equations to user defined equations with manual editing and regressions. And there's also uh, auto decimation of 2D, as I mentioned. Again, we'll sort of run through most of these in the demo. So let's jump into Patrol and take a look at the tool um, in action. So the way this works, um, we come to uh, insert new blueback GDI investigation. <clears throat> so the panel will automatically open. So this is the investigation panel. Um, this can be reaccessed from the domain object that also was just added when we insert it in the investigation. 
and double click to get back to the panel. Um, so it automatically opens to the data tab, which is where all the necessary data is selected and loaded. The panel also acts as a central repository for any restrictions, um, equations, annotations, appearance settings, etc. Again, which we'll run through in the demo. So let's start to build an investigation. You can choose to add a well folder initially. So I just need to come down and toggle the well folder. So my C wells. I'm going to bring in my porosity, permeability, and um, gamma logs. We also have an additional value we're bringing in to color the plot by. And for well data, uh, discrete templates are also supported. So I'll choose my Fashi log. Um, and we're also going to choose to add some <coughs> more data, an individual well, in this case V2. It picks up the templates automatically, and again, I just need to reselect my value. Um, so now we have um, well picks available to filter the data by to a particular reservoir zone or the full reservoir interval, um, or indeed plus minus uh, a constant depth. I'm just not going to use these for the demo, um, but so here we can also see. <coughs> That folder one uh, contains 78% of the data in the investigation, which equates to 8,500 of the 10,000 points in the total investigation. Similarly, for B2, uh, it has 20% of the data, so 2,500 of the 10,000 points. So I'm going to click OK to um, bring this data um, into the investigation. So before we do, okay, so just to give you a quick run through, here's all the additional data types. So we can also bring in 3D seismic, 2D seismic, 2D seismic by vintage, surface data, grid data, and user-defined table data. So in theory, it's possible to plot all of these data types within the same investigation, um, providing they have um, the available uh, templates. So we're just going to click OK to load this data into the investigation. <clears throat> and if we come to Window, we have a new uh, blueback histogram window, scatter plot, and cross plot window. So we're going to open a cross plot to start off with. And then we can turn on the investigation to which we loaded our well data. Okay, so just to show you around this plot uh, initially, so we can see that we can sort of pan and zoom on the scatter plot and the histograms sort of scale uh, and are linked, um, the axes are linked. We can also sort of come to the histogram and, and, and zoom out as, as it were. And then click to view all. Um, we can copy to bitmap, there's various export options which we'll work through based on data selections. Um, we can choose which data we want to display, so we can change to view um, gamma against permeability for example. And we do the same thing on the, um, the vertical axis. Um, we have our control data points, so data visibility, which data that you load would you like displayed in the plot. Um, we can colour the plot by and various uh, date, the templates we brought in, so gamma ray, for example. Um, we have tools for how the uh, histograms are, are, are displayed, so bars, uh, lines, etc. We have our um, restrictions or filters, um, which we'll look through in the demo. We also have our various be best fit line options and also our um, annotations. Okay, so if I come into the um, appearance settings, just to show you a few settings in here. For the well folder, I can toggle to choose by color, uh, toggle to color by individual well. I click OK and then come back to our color by data and choose data. So this gives us our porosity, permeability, scatter plot, and histogram colored by individual well, which we can then also display as um, uh, individual bars if required. Um, we can also choose to, for example, um, color by fascias. We can also choose to make a, a deselection of data, so we can toggle off our well folders. And then if we click to view all, so we're just looking at that one individual um, B2 well. And again, if I come back into the appearance settings for the B2 well, I can choose to show as point density. And so this is going to bin the, the data points. Um, and just let me take the point sizes down. Um, so the points uh, have been binned into a density uh, background plot. So we can add in a, color, a, a continuous legend for the point density. If 
if I come into the axis settings, um, we can choose to um, set the minimum and maximum ranges for each of the axes in the plot. So these can be sort of standardized across many plot windows. We can also increase the bin size to get a finer uh, resolution on the point density. As I mentioned, there was an enhancement to the point density, so this now uh, reflects data visibility. So if I start to toggle off um, various fascias, you can see that the point density plot is updating based on statistical data. So we'll bring those fascias back. Um, I'm just going to toggle off this point density. We can make these points a little smaller as well. Turn our data back on and click to view all. <clears throat> okay, so next I would like to look, show you the um, best fit line options, which leaves it in here in add equation. So if I open it up, there's various best fit lines. So there's add linear, log, exponential, power, power, and polynomial. And there's also add uh, user defined equation if you'd like to bring your own uh, best fit line in. So we're going to add a couple in, uh, so we'll add an exponential <coughs> and a linear line. Um, so these lines are also managed through the equation settings. So I can make a multiple selection, make them both black, show the equation on the line, show the um, errors based on a certain confidence factor, and then click OK to apply those changes. So now we can see that they're both uh, black, we've got the equation and their confidence uh, error bars. Um, so also just to show you, in the um, GDI, for both of these best fit lines, we actually store the equation that the best fit line um, equates to, um, as opposed to in Patrol, where it's a set of x, y points conforming to those uh, relationships. So if I come to control equations, um, so these are our two lines that we currently have displayed. If I right click. There's a couple of options here. One, I can save out to a control function. So if I choose my function folder, um, so this is the exponential fit we've just written out. Uh, and then if I come into the settings, we can see it's been converted to the, the format for storing, how, how functions are stored in, in patrol. Conversely, we can right click on a patrol function and choose to save as blueback equation. So you can bring um, functions from the patrol domain into GDI and conversely push them out from GDI to patrol. The other option we had um, was to save as user-defined equation. So if I toggle there and then come back into my equation settings. So this is the, the original exponential uh, best fit line. We now have this um, equation one, which is our user-defined equation. It's opened up the um, regression factors. So if I just choose to make this red a little thicker and um, toggle on, Choose to add that in. So basically, we just edited the, edit the, the regression for the exponential line and refitted it uh, manually. Okay, so let's move from the cross plot window to a histogram window, but still using the same investigation. So I'm just going to close this window, new uh, blue black histogram window. So we'll toggle on the same investigation, so the same set of well data we loaded. So this is our currently displaying our porosity distribution. Uh, as we saw previously, we can toggle to display any of the distributions we've got temp data we've loaded. So permeability, for example, um, we can choose to color by um, fascias. Again, we can sort of make a, a subset sub selection of data. So we start to toggle off uh, various um, particular wells. Um, just to color by data, let's add a loading bin so we can see what we're looking at. Um, so we can also choose to display um, as individual bars and also change from a count to a percentage. For histograms, you can choose to add in statistics. So we have our minimum, maximum, mean, uh, P10, P25, P50, etc. statistics for displayed for each well. We have, so we have a permeability distribution displayed for each individual well along with the associated statistics. 
So I'm just going to choose to color this by uh, ashes. And when we have the um, data displayed with a percentage, we can also add in cumulative distribution functions. So we can choose to add in our channel sand, our levee sand, and our background floodplain cumulative distribution functions for our uh, permeability data. So next I'd like to show you um, some of the restrictions. So to do that, I'm going to get rid of these CDFs, get rid of the statistics, liquid porosity, and individual bars. So these are legend as well. I'm also going to add in a new scatter plot window. Again, you take the same investigation. I'm going to put these side by side and choose to color this one. Okay, so there's various um, restriction or filter options. So we have um, both GDI and patrol filters available. Um, horizontal and vertical filters are 1D, so they restrict data in a single dimension, whereas rectangle and freehand filters restrict data in both plotted dimensions. So we're going to add in a um, horizontal filter and just make a selection of some porosities. I'm just going to choose to um, come into the filter settings and change the colour on this so it doesn't clash with our ashes colouring. Okay, so now we've applied this filter to our scatter plot. The same filter becomes available in our here's our histogram. So we can come to control restrictions to filters, choose to turn on our porosity filter. So the same selection um, of porosity data is applied in the um, histogram. Um, <clears throat> again, if I come into the uh, filter settings for this particular filter, uh, we can choose to invert, for example, or we can choose to um, set a particular range, so 0 0.05 to 0. Point, oh, sorry, 0 0.1. Okay, so both filters have been um, updated, running 0 0.5 to 0 0.1. Also, we can sort of change the filter range in the scatter plot, and the filter is then. Um, automatically updated uh, in the histogram. Um, another nice thing is in with the histograms, if we turn on the statistics, whilst you have a filter applied, you get two sets of statistics. Um, so the first five for the first the five fashies, the discrete fashies we have are the um, unfiltered statistics, so all data, minimum, maximum, mean statistics and uh, P10 to P90s. And then the bottom five are the same fashies, discrete fashies, but with the filter applied with the statistics reflecting um, the filter, so the data being taken out. So you can start to see how, if you sort of start to take data out from the scatter plot, you have the filter in a corresponding histogram, how those sort of um, deselection or filtering of data can uh, re um, affect the overall statistics. Um, also, in the same way with the um, equations, we can take our um, filter and we can choose to right click on it and save out as a patrol filter. Uh, and again, conversely from uh, patrol filters, we can right click and choose to save as um, a blueback filter. <clears throat> so one last thing to show you with the filters is that if we um, change the space in which we're displaying data, so I change to a, a gamma permeability plot, this data selection based on the porosity filter is redistributed in a new space. And the same thing can be done for the um, uh, histogram. So redistributing the filter based on your porosity selection against the new data distribution. Okay, so I'm just going to jump back to porosity permeability in a scatter plot and use my filter. I'm going to color this by. Um, permeability in this case. Okay, so I'm going to choose to add in another filter. I'm going to add a freehand filter. Just make a selection of a, a cloud of data. So now we have this selection made. This opens up various export options. So I can choose to toggle here and um, export to spreadsheet. So that's going to write out to an Excel sheet um, all of the data points we have made in our, our freehand filter selection. Um, you also get a worksheet per well. You can also choose to save as point set. So I'll run. So 
So this has created a point set with attributes, which is basically representing each data point as a point set with attribute in 3D space. So if I come to my, um, open up my well logs, so these are the, the wells data we have plotted uh, with the permeability log. Turn on the point set with attribute we made, just to fix these. So this is basically representing in 3D space um, all of the data points we've selected uh, in the filter against their respective um, trajectory and permeability logs. Okay, there's another similar kind of integration of data selection between uh, from a GDI plot window to other control uh, native windows and ways of uh, displaying data. So if I come to my data points, I can right click on a particular log and choose to save as an indicator. Um, and then if I open my, my panel, so and then come to that log, which was uh, for the C2 well. So basically we've created this um, uh, investigation indicator log. So this is just a true false um, log. Is this particularly pen? particular permeability well log sample uh, included in this freehand filter, yes or no. So again, just integrating between data selection and GDI window and representing that selection in other control uh, windows. Okay, so there's an, another similar functionality um, to do with integration between data selection and, and 3D space, which is called this dynamic point set. I'm going to show you that uh, uh, a little later on once we've loaded some seismic data into the um, into a, an investigation. Okay, so moving on. So I'm going to reopen the original investigation uh, and add more data. So you can basically come back to any investigation uh, at any point and choose to add in uh, data to the investigation. So for example, we've run a QC on our um, well data. We can choose to bring in a grid model as well. So I'm going to take my geo grid and maybe start to check how the the data distribution seen from the well has been represented in the grid. So I choose my prosty permeability flashes. We have options for um, controlling the IJK range of the data that's brought in uh, against the grid. We can also increase the increment as necessary to sort of start to reduce the number of data the grid brings to the investigation if necessary. We also have segment and zone filters, so if I toggle these on, these will then be available in the investigation to filter and colour the data by. We can also utilise boundary and well radius filters. So I'm going to click OK to bring this additional grid data to the investigation. And then I'm going to open a scatter plot, turn on our well and grid data together. I'm just going to fix these settings. I'm going to actually uh, take out the B2, bear with me. Um, so this appearance settings for our okay. Uh, let's just apply that, sorry. <clears throat> okay, the appearance settings for our well folder We'll make them black and our geo grid uh, red. We'll also take the point size down. Okay, so here we have our um, uh, grid prosty permeability scatter plot in red and our well data uh, behind in black. So we can also choose if we bring in a um, new histogram. We load up the same investigation again. We can put these side by side. We can choose to um, split this by um, individual um, bars and also turn on the statistics. So here we can see the porosity distribution for our um, well data versus our grid data. So you can say, okay, maybe there's a little bit higher porosity started to be captured, uh, represented in the, in the grid. We can check the statistics. We can also quickly toggle to check our permeability distributions in the same way. Okay, so maybe the grid yeah, is not quite a great representation of the overall distribution of the porosity, uh, permeability data from our wells. Um, we can then also start to use the, um, so 
sorry, the segment and zone filters in the crossplot. So you can start to filter data out. You can make a, an analysis by individual segment or individual zone, maybe. Then also start to filter your wells by wells in the corresponding segment. Um, so it'll make a bit of a more detailed analysis of your grid parameter distributions compared to your original uh, well inputs. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how we can integrate between um, uh, a plot, a scatter plot of um, grid, a grid parameter. So I'm going to take out my wells. I'm going to color this by porosity, and we'll just make these points a little larger. Okay, so this is the scatter plot of porosity permeability for our grid data. And then also going to bring the grid data into a permeability grid parameter into a 3D window. So just to show you again a little bit more integration between interacting between data in a GDI plot window and making a selection and representing that elsewhere in patrol. So I'm going to choose to add in a, a horizontal patrol filter. Again make a selection of porosity. Um, <clears throat> because this was a patrol filter it's been written to the filter, patrol filter folder. So I'm going to toggle on my 3D window, click porosity, the grid parameter becomes um, filtered by the same patrol filter we have in our plot window. Again, this is all dynamic, so you can change the filter uh, range <coughs> and see immediately see the effects um, of the same filter against the um, relevant grid parameter in 3D space. Okay, so we're going to move on and insert a new investigation and bring some seismic data into a new investigation. So I click to add 3D seismic. Um, in this case, I'm going to take survey two. It's going to be VP, VS, uh, and row data. So we have a similar, um, in with the same way to the grid data, we can straight constrain the seismic by inline cross line rather than IJK. You can again um, decrease or decrease the uh, step or increment. Um, you can constrain by surfaces, boundaries, and also well radius filters. So we're going to click to load this seismic data into our new investigation. I'm going to take a new window, turn on our next investigation, which was investigation two. So in this case, we're going to color the data by p velocity. We can add in a legend, um, and then we're also again going to show you now this um, dynamic point set. So again, making a selection in, on your plot and integrating that into 3D space. So if I turn on my seismic cube, so this is the VP cube. Um, so we're going to make a selection. In this case, a horizontal cutoff. We'll make a selection of some low um, p velocity data from this cut plot. So the filter has been applied to the uh, GDI window. We can then toggle here to create the dynamic point set. So if I come to my 3D window, I can choose to uh, turn on my dynamic, dynamic point set, and then if I come to the settings, I'm going to colour by attribute, and make them a bit smaller again, OK, and at P velocity attribute. So this is a, a, a point in 3D space um, representing each um, data point here in the scatter plot. And as you might expect, because this is dynamic point set with attribute, I can choose to um, edit the filter in the GDI window. So first thing, the filter gets applied, and then the point set is going to update here in the 3D window. So there you go. There's a, an updated um, dynamic point set based on the, the, the shifted filter we just applied in the GDI window. Um, so a couple more examples to go, and then we'll jump back into PowerPoints. Um, we're going to start a new investigation. Show, again, show you a new, another data type, which is going to be this um, table data. So this basically allows you to bring in any table data from Excel or Patrol spreadsheets into GDI uh, and uh, work a data analysis. So the first example I have of this is um, a set of stack velocities. So here we have some uh, a stack velocity point set in 3D space which lives here, so it, it's been imported as a point set with attribute. If I come to the spreadsheet, I can 
can basically take a make a selection of my time and velocity um, points. I can choose to copy rows and columns to the clipboard. Then in my uh, GDI panel, I just need to define the columns. So this is going to be um, general time and also um, stack velocity. I can then hit here to um, paste the uh, buffer into the GDI uh, table. And you just need to remove this header row and then click OK to, to load the data to the investigation. We'll take a new scatterplot window and turn on our third investigation. So we can then choose to colour the data by um, velocity and also swap the axis. Okay, so we have a time sort of running in reverse here, but um, just uh, you know, you can now sort of start to make analysis of your stack velocity, plot velocity against time. You know, a nice smooth transition with, with increasing time. There's no sort of outliers. Uh, so a nice example of how you can sort of start to integrate existing patrol spreadsheets uh, into uh, GDI for uh, an analysis. The next uh, final um, example, sorry. Want to move from that is that I have um, a workflow that I've run to produce a set of volume depth curves. So, this is basically running a structural model um, through a loop to calculate a bulk value, um, uh, uh, sorry, a bulk volume um, calculation based on a shifting uh, sort of base reservoir or oil water contact, for example. So, I have a set of um, volumetric cases here. If I come to my um, volumetric process, just show you where the data's come from. So if I just get to a report, okay. So this is the output sheet from one of my um, workflow loops. So I basically have a bulk volume um, calculation here for the full bulk structure of a, a structural model based on a shifting uh, base reservoir or oil water contact. So this already <coughs> exists as an investigation. So here you can see I have four different structural scenarios, each with a, a bulk volume, a set of bulk volumetric calculations based on a shifting oil water contact. So if I open a scatter plot window, and we can choose to turn on our sort of volume versus depth curves and swap them um, on display with our uh, patrol volumetric output sheet. So this is basically taking the bulk volume uh, from this looped volumetric calculations, pushing it into GDI. And now you can sort of see um, various bulk volume curves uh, with depth for four different structural uh, scenarios. Okay, so I'm just gonna, that's the end of the demo. Um, I hope you found um, some of the functionality interesting. Uh, so I'm just gonna jump back into um, PowerPoint to finish off. So just to summarize, um, the Geodata Investigator is a true cross-domain data analysis tool for patrol that allows you to compare attributes from seismic logs, geomodels, surfaces, and table data directly against each other. The Blueback Geodata Investigator provides excellent tools uh, and three new plot windows to help you better understand and analyze your data to get to the correct decision. Most importantly, this plugin uh, is available now to assist you with all your patrol data analysis requirements. The tool and the evaluation licenses are available from the Ocean Store, ocean.srb.com, or alternatively, please get in contact with us on sales at blueback-reservoir.com. We can assist in getting this plugin to you. The price for a single license is 14,000 US, but this comes down considerably. When you take multiple licenses or have existing toolbox bundle licenses that you can top up with the GDI plugin for as little as $4,000 per license. Again, please contact us on sales at blueback Reservoir if you have any further questions or queries. So just to take a few um, of the Q&A that have come in. Um, so yeah, you saw I was um, running my demo in Patrol 2012. And yes, we currently um, have support for Patrol 2011 as well for the Geodata Investigator. Um, yeah, we're on. Uh, release 1.1 we're currently planning for release 2 so if you have any um, additional data types for example that you would like to see uh, as part of the next release so perhaps volumetric objects cases or 
with sort of direct support or stimulation data and description. And we're quite open to uh, discussions, so please get in contact with us and um, you know, we'll consider all reasonable requests. Um, yeah, okay, I think that's it for now. So uh, just a final thank you um, for, for your participation, participation. And you'll be getting a link to this recording tomorrow. Um, again, please feel free to distribute as required. You can stream on demand and share with your colleagues. Um, yeah, any final uh, questions or queries, it's sales at bluebag-reservoir.com. All right, thank you very much and goodbye for now.